Hello and welcome to yet another episode of Six Degrees of Association, the only online TV show that's dedicated to the pursuit of association success. I'm Sarah Gonzalez from Redback Conferencing and as usual the man sitting next to my left is Andrew McCullum from Association of Corporate Council Australia. Hello Sarah, how are you? We've lasted this long without Rob. Yeah. Who yeah. would have thought? Rob, sorry, Rob who? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah. Looking forward to another jam-packed episode. We're mm -hmm. probably at 21 minutes 30 seconds now. So I'd like to welcome another one of our guests for this season and her name is Wendy McWilliam from Research Australia and she's the Strategic Communications Manager there. How are you, Wendy? Good, thank you, Sarah. Great to have you. Thanks. Hello, Wendy. Good to have you. <laughs> Thanks, Andrew. I feel like I'm in the middle because you guys know each other so much. And it's like the, yeah, exactly. Mm. So I'll try and keep up, guys. I don't <laughs> want the team down. <laughs> Shouldn't be too many inside jokes, should there? Yeah. So before we get into it and before we start peppering you, let's get straight over to Andrew with your thumbs up for this fortnight. Thanks, Sarah. I have to give a uh, thumbs up for me is highlighting the fantastic work of the Asia Pacific Incentives and Meeting Expo. Very recently, they celebrated their or delivered their 25th and biggest annual conference to date. Um, this is a huge event in Melbourne that attracts delegates from the meetings, from the event sectors, from all over the world, and four and a half thousand delegates at this year's event. I mean, wow. That's a decent event. Um, had an amazing range of speakers. Let me throw a few names at you, mm -hmm. Sarah. Uh, Holly Ransom, I'm sure we've all heard of. Mm -hmm. Ida Buttrose. Um, mm. Kirk Pengilly. You wouldn't know. No, who sorry. Um, Showing my age. There used to be a band called In Excess. Uh, oh. So very impressive uh, putting on an event of that size and well done to the hardworking team at AIME who no doubt are already turning their minds on how to uh, better that event for uh, in 2018. Mm, it would be good if they had some sort of a case study about how they got so many people to that event. Mm, yeah, and how it's obviously grown from mm. something so much smaller. So thumbs down, that leads me to. Um, many viewers, this is, a, this is a bit unfortunate, many viewers would have seen the stories about the class action being lodged against APCO Group and what's termed sham contracting. That's hiring independent uh, workers as contractors when they really are employees. Um, so far, this has been isolated to a single organisation, albeit one that had staff working for multiple charities across Australia. But as part of the for purpose sector, this really is a, an appalling black eye for all of us and some of the directors of those organisations who were using APCO contractors, you know, who were underpaid, who were exposed to very unfair workplace conditions, some of these people are going to be shifting pretty nervously in their seats right now. Mm. So this is a big problem, as I say, unfortunately it neg negatively impacts the entire sector, so as I say, a huge thumbs down to those involved. Unfortunately, the beneficiaries of those charities, they're the people that are going to be missing out. Yeah. That is really dodgy. I know, and yeah, and as I say, it's, it's unfortunate that the broader sector yeah. gets dragged into the drag down with it, unfortunately. With every thumbs up, there's definitely a thumbs down. Mm. So back to the positive, um, my thumbs up, and last episode, um, for those of you who joined, and Andrew, you remember we did speak to Damien from the ADA, Damien amazing Mitch, panellist, great guy. Um, regarding governance, and there was a lot of talk around that. Um, this time, I'd like to give a thumbs up to the Australian Institute of Superannuation Trustees, so AIST. They've developed a new govern uh, governance code, sorry, that reinforces the importance of member representation on the boards of superannuation funds. So that's great, but what's even better, they've developed this code, they've actually sent that draft code to their membership for their feedback and their consultation. So that applies to more than 50 profit to member funds, mm. which is great because it shows they care about their feedback and what they have to say. And I really love this quote from their CEO, Tom Garcia. You can't soundbite good governance. It doesn't come down to one factor. Good governance is fundamentally about a group of people making good decisions, having the right skills and also having a strong commitment to the members they serve. And I think that just sums it up. I mm. think it's great. They've done something great, but then they're going to their members for feedback. And back in March, I was actually at the AIST conference and amazing conference up in mm. the Gold Coast. And you just really got that sense there as well that they actually do care, care about their members. And yeah, I, I just think they're doing really well as an association. Yeah, and it'd be fascinating to see just sort of what, what level of feedback, how many yeah. members do provide that feedback. And that's, to that's a sense of engagement, isn't it? Exactly, it's, yeah. it's engaging with members and seeing just what they are, mm. uh, how engaged they are in the process. So, yeah, yeah, full credit to them. And thumbs down. So, um, one word, sponsorship. <laughs> now, um, not that sponsorship in itself <laughs> a is a word. negative. I don't want to get into this too much, but I do feel like 
Associations tend to sell themselves short when it comes to sponsorship, so they're either too scared to ask, some people don't know it exists, especially within the online world, so people running online events, and they really sometimes don't even ask for as much as what they're worth. So we see this a lot, um, you know, you look at even online events, there's all this white space, people have the ability to go out mm. and to use it for sponsorship, and then when you talk to them about it, like I said, there's this idea that, you know, oh, I don't know if we could get that much, or I don't know if we could really do this. I just feel like associations really need to stand up and realise that people are willing to pay good money to reach their members and go out and ask for it because if you don't ask for it, you don't know, but don't sell yourself short. Yeah. What are your thoughts on this? Because um, you're in communications, so I'd be interested to see your experience not only within Research Australia, but in your previous roles, Wendy. Um, online, well, sponsorship for online events, mm. webinars, webcasts, is it's the unknown knowledge. Yeah. Um, within associations, sometimes we uh, lack that knowledge of how yeah. the breadth of the audience. Mm. We look at our members and so let's say we've got 8,000 members. Our online community is that 8,000 members yeah. where you and I know that it's not. It's, yeah. it's quadruple that. It's a spider web. It continues to grow and grow and grow. Mm. So, um, yeah, it's frustrating, but, yeah, they should be definitely upselling everything to do with mm. online sponsorship. Maybe we should be helping Absolutely. people get knowledge out there. Yeah. Mm as opposed to just whinging on it on thumbs down. Maybe. I'll take that task on. <laughs> Let's look at that for a future uh, guest spot on this show. Perhaps, yeah, so. possibly. Um, so with that out of the way, thumbs up, mm. thumbs down. Thank Very you so good. much for your thumbs. input. Thank you. Um, we're now going to turn our attention to our special guest. Back to yeah. you, Wendy. So first of all, you've been mm. with Research Australia for just a short while. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about them and what they do? Very short while, actually, Sarah. Um, so Research Australia, I guess our purpose is to make health and medical research um, the high priority yep. for government, mm -hmm. for the consumers and the community, and for those doing the research. Um, so this is very different to science. We're looking at just health and medical um, within our association. Mm -hmm. We traditionally represent a really broad spectrum. It's yep. the universities, it's the health and medical research, research institutes, um, it's also the corporate um, health corporates, so Telstra Health a huge facet. Wow. Um, that what are our, they're actually one of our foundation members, Bupa, and then even the private sector. So mm. you've got the pharmaceutical companies, they're our members. So we wear many hats. Mm. Um, the way we push our story is through advocacy. Mm -hmm. um, we have uh, two team members that go to parliament and talk to parliament, um, parliamentary members about our cause. Nice. And that's putting health and medical research on so there. So much bigger. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. It's huge. Wow. So, I mean, you're the Strategic Communications Manager at yes. Research Australia, as you say. Now, what does that mean to you? So, what are, from a membership communications, you've, you're talking about big organisations. Mm -hmm. What does that mean at that uh, communication? How are you communicating to those members and growing so, your members, no doubt? So, it's a different association to, I guess, my previous um, groups that I've worked for. So, we represent organisations. Mm -hmm. And within that organisations, we have individual um, they're not members, they're individual um, contacts, I guess. Mm -hmm. So I'll give you one example. Monash University is one of our organisational members. Within that organisation is 61 members. Okay. So they're really engaged with us. So I'm actually communicating to 61 members from the dean to um, the 2IC researcher. Wow. So it's pretty hard to um, segment your communication pieces. And is it based on job title? Is it based on location? Is it based on which part of the sector they represent? Mm. Um, and it's a struggle that I'm trying to work through right now, Andrew. <laughs> so <laughs> any suggestions would be great. Um, but it is difficult, um, really difficult. Um, our strength is their broad membership, mm. but also our weakness is how do you target those specific audiences? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So that, and that's obviously the challenge is the dean is talking a different language to the uh, to I see down the bottom. So what do you mm. do in terms of what are your research, sorry, what are your communication channels to your members? Um, I guess the top end of town, it's our board. Mm -hmm. So um, we had our board meeting last week and it was the first time I got to experience this high calibre of 15 people in a room. They are, we can communicate directly one-on-one -on -one with that group mm. because they are, that's how we engage with our members. Um, the other people, we don't run events as such, so apart from an awards dinner, which I think a lot of associations do, so at the end of the year we do an awards dinner, which really focuses on that individual upcoming researcher, mm. but generally I think it's just through a variety of different tools, mm. um, online uh, submissions plus our Inspire magazine, which is a quarterly magazine, 
e-newsletters and um, email, EDMs, and etc. Yeah. Just on that, because we spoke about in the past um, mm. when we had Gillian, was it oh, Gillian and I think Tricia as well, yeah, um, and Andrew mentioned the take up of digital as opposed to um, the hard copy. Yeah. How, how, where do you sit on that? Are you a fan of both? Do you send, you know, where does your association and yourself sit? Ah, oh, reps. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there was a magazine back at Fitness Australia that was just hard copy and we became both. Yeah. Um, now I'm working with just online. Yep digital um, the uptake's yeah, huge <laughs> <laughs> the uptake uptake the contributors yeah. are our members yeah mm. um, I send out a call for um, contributors I filled my magazine mm. within four weeks wow. the deadline was two weeks ago I didn't chase one contributor Wow but I am working with academics so that is something they really work towards they love yeah. that deadline and they love contributing and talking about what their work is mm. um, I really like online. I like flip books. I like yeah. being able to click through to URLs. I want to explore and go deeper into that article. Mm -hmm. um, I want to be stimulated also by images. Yep. Um, and I think our members do as well, mm. in, no matter where, they, what, you know, where they're from. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm. Mm. so you've got, obviously, Wendy, I mean, you, you know, your, your breadth of association experience is large and diverse. Mm. What are you seeing from a member engagement point of view that's, uh, that you think is something that more people should be taking up? Um, that we probably need to scrap, <gasps> hold your breath, the um, tick box. So that tick box of uh. features and benefits of members. Um, I represent organisations now. My previous organisation was um, representing individuals. Both had tick boxes. One was $50 per person. Mm -hmm. I'm now working with $5,000 to $50,000 memberships. Mm. Both had tick boxes. How does that even yeah. cut across? Yeah. How do I can you know um, contribute fifty thousand dollars because I get more ticks than someone who's um, contributing fifteen hundred. Mm. So get rid of that. You can work with features and benefits, looking at the individual um, stakeholder. Mm. That's my advice. Good advice. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> sure. And um, you're also involved um, as well as Research Australia with another organisation, mm. Wings of Hope. Can yeah. you just tell us a little bit more about that and how people can get involved because it's a great cause? Yeah, thank you, Sarah. Um, so I'm a founder of Wings of Hope, which is an, a um, uh, not-for-profit association as well, looking at those bereaved by suicide. Mm. Um, we'll set up by um, the bereaved community and we now have a resource called Red Chocolate Elephants. It's a printed resource with a DVD, a little bit old school, but we're looking yeah. at in changing that. To digital? To digital, totally. <laughs> because it's targeting um, under 10 year olds. Wow. So they probably want to look at it at their iPad mm. and listen to the um, audio. Um, and what we're doing, our project this year, is to distribute that Red Chocolate Elephant resource into every primary school nationally. So you can definitely show your support by going on our website, mm. which wow. is wingsofhope.org.au. Excellent. Yeah. Wow, so nationally, that's going <laughs> oh, nationally. nationally. It's going nationally, that's fantastic. There is 33,000 primary schools in Australia. Yeah, so go. we've done 1,000. We're getting there, baby steps. Yeah. yeah so you mentioned the board. So does your board actually engage with your members? And if they do, how do they do that? Well, all our board represent members. Mm -hmm. So the way to engage with members, and I guess one of the strategies is to grow your membership, mm. is for them to promote membership. Okay. So. I was thinking after our board meeting last week is why don't we do an NPS to our board? So we send a net promoter score out to all our board members because if they're not referring the association that they're part of onto their peers and or leaders of the organisations, then how do we continue to grow? Mm. Um, we, want, we don't want them to be detractors, we want them to be promoters. So you can really leverage your board, um, especially when you look at that room of high calibre um, people. They've got the mm. members behind them. Is that quite common in your experience, Andrew? Have you ever yeah, been part of something like that? It's a, it's a great question. I mean, there's often boards are sort of consisting of people that are uh, elected by members, so are mm. in fact members, mm. and then there are those that are appointed who aren't. Mm. And, you know, sometimes I've seen there's a disconnect between the appointed directors as, as opposed to, you know, representing the members and those that are elected. So the elected members tend to want to engage with the members because they want to get re-elected mm. at the end of their term. But it's a challenge to sort of get that steady, regular uh, involvement, certainly. So if you can do it at Research Australia, I'm keen to hear some tips on, uh, on uh, how you did it, that's mm. for sure. Absolutely. All right. And Wendy, you're sort of, um, again, from an association's mm. background, what is it about the associations that uh, keeps, you in, keeps you in the sector? 
um, that we get to look at organisations and work out the need. So if they can't do something themselves, mm. how can we help them? And also if they can, the association can probably do it better. Mm. You know, creating that alliance, building the, um, that group together to sort of go forward to the government or to get discounts on utilities, et cetera. So, yeah, that's my purpose in life with associations. Yeah. Well, it looks like you're enjoying it and you're doing great work on both ends yeah. of the spectrum. Thank so you. Thanks so much. Thanks, Sarah. Now, thanks, Andrew. as always, we want you to stick around because mm. I think you're going to be very proud of Andrew for oh. this next segment. <laughs> so, as always, um, every fortnight we ask Andrew to go around through the internet, find the most obscure association he can find and then bring it to us to showcase the amazing work they're doing. So what do you have for us today? Thanks, Sarah. And on that, I'm still waiting for the reimbursement of my travel oh, expenses yeah, yeah. too. <laughs> Check into that, but um, thank you for that. And uh, as, as our viewers will know, over the last couple of weeks, we've certainly been to North America. We went to Iceland. Have you booked your holiday yet? Oh, you get it done, Iceland. So yeah, get where'd it you done. go this time? Um, but we're back, we're back in Australia now and very pleased to talk about the uh, Australian Miniature Enthusiasts Association. That's right, the AMEA, as I like to Miniature call them. Miniature people or...? Let me finish. Okay, sorry. Uh, this is my second. <laughs> the AMEA, uh, thinking miniature dollhouses, miniature furnishings that go into miniature oh. dollhouses and so forth, miniature life fittings, if you will. Um, I'm making an assumption about that last point. But the AMA, AMEA has some very, very worthy aims. Uh, let me read a couple of to you. Promote the hobby of miniature making and collecting. Very important. Mm. The share of miniature-related information in a non-competitive forum raising capital to undertake such tasks and provide advice and assistance to clubs that do, that do miniatures and publish a newsletter three times a year. So to top it all off, if you find yourself in Hobart uh, later this year, around the end of September, mm. you might be able to come along to the uh, Miniature Enthusiasts Association, hosted by the Miniature Enthusiasts of Tasmania, and that's a scary thought because there's obviously a lot of state-based miniature enthusiasts out there. So, uh, but there you have it, the AMEA, doing excellent work in their chosen field. Uh, all the very best to them. Great to be able to feature them on this segment. And will you be going to Tasmania or is this something we need to start a GoFundMe page to make sure that we can get you there because you That's seem a little bitter about it, to be honest. That's a fantastic idea, yes. If uh, you can go to this website and make a donation and uh, yeah. I'll happily report on it for a yeah. future episode. Go to wingsofhope.com.au. Yeah. <laughs> something like that instead. Yeah. Maybe you can decide where your money's better spent. <laughs> Excellent. Um, well, there's our two-minute warning. Mm. Mm, who would have thought? Yeah, already. Happens so quickly, Goodness doesn't me. it? <laughs> So just on that, this is a time where we can actually go back, look at last, uh, the last episode we had and also share the feedback that we've actually received from you guys regarding last week's feedback as well. So any feedback from you this time around? Well, one thing I, it's probably worthy of mentioning now is, uh, and great news is that uh, we are pleased to announce that you and I and a as yet to be named guest will mm -hmm. be doing another live show at the Aussie, the ACE convention uh, this year. So the negotiations have uh, happened. They've been mostly yep. uh, mostly good natured. And uh, <laughs> yeah, so Brendan and the team are inviting us back. So that's fantastic. And that's on May 11th and 12th here in Sydney. So Excellent. really looking forward to that. Yeah, and we're going to have an um, open panel. So mm. we don't really know who we're going to have on there yet. So if yeah. anyone would like to put an application forward, we don't have a process, but just feel free to get in touch and we'll go from there. Highly unlikely Brendan will uh, put his hand up again, <laughs> I think, after last year. But, uh, that's, a cool, that's a challenge, Brendan. We're looking for you. <laughs> yes, we are. Well, thank you on that note. Um, thank you, Andrew, as always. Um, great Pleasure. to um, be with, sitting beside you and getting through all the segments <laughs> that we so much love. And also thank you, Wendy. Like Thanks, I said, it looks like you're doing some great work and great um, you know, showing some other associations out there your tips and your advice within the comms sector. Anytime. So, great to have you here, Wendy. Good job. Thanks. Yeah, and any future um, feedback, good or bad, anything else you want to tell us or let us know, feel free to hashtag 60A. Also go to 6degreesofassociation.com to watch previous episodes and also future episodes. That's where you'll find them. And also associationsuccess.org. There's also some great information there that you can find. Thanks again. Join us next time when we're speaking to Lee Tonito, CEO of the Australian Marketing Institute. Thanks again. And remember, too much conversation always kills the chat. Bye for now.